Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Good morning to all my listeners. This is, as you know, if you're tuning in, Hello Self Podcast. And the mission of this podcast is to help any of you that see cans in your life, turn those cans into cans. And if you've got dreams on that someday shelf, get it off. And the way we go about meeting that mission is through guests like we have today, and I'll introduce her in a moment is them telling their story, because I believe that in everybody's story, there are many gifts and lots of glories for someone else, because in the end, we're more alike than we are different, even though we'd like to say, oh, nobody else feels this way about going, taking on a project, or if you're thinking about starting a business, Hello Self is really about looking at yourself and My guest will share some of the times that she looked at herself and made a transition in her life that changed her life direction. And that's what Hello Self is about. It can be those moments where all of a sudden we just say, I'm not, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to, I don't like what I'm doing. I'm not happy. I'm going to, you know what? I've been dreaming for a long time. Now I'm going to make it happen. So if that's why you're here, listeners, you're going to get some strategies and tips from my guest today that can help you move forward. Get away from that signpost that says, I'm lost, and where do I go from here? You're going to move forward, and you're going to know the turn to make. So I'd like for you now to welcome my guest, Inga Faison Cavett. Inga, say hello to them. Well, hello, everyone. Super excited to be here with you today and share some golden nuggets to help you along your journey. Oh, I like that. Golden nuggets. That's going to be good. And we'll be highlighting some of those as she shares her life story, because I don't want you to miss them. So as we get started, I'd like to just give you a little background about, and I'm going to call her Inga. She might go back by, or you might know her as (laughs) Inga Faye. But today, I'm going to call her Inga. Okay, just a little about her bio, and then she'll detail more of the specifics of it. Inga is a confidence coach. She worked as a, listen to this, mechanical engineer in chemical plants for over 20 years. She left her engineering career, and that's where we're probably going to hear a hello self moment from her. (laughs) to follow her entrepreneurial spirit. She now pursues her life dream following five Fs. Let me tell you, faith, family, freedom, flexibility, and fitness. That gives you a little bit of an idea of the story you're going to hear today. She enjoys empowering women to live their best life and to become learners, lifetime learners. She likes to help by building relationships with them, help them to learn and to see that possibilities are there for them and to identify, and that's what Hello Self is about, identify themselves as human beings, as people, and not just numbers. Wow, doesn't that sound exciting? Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Inga now to share her part of the story that she lived. Inga, here you go. Yes, so I am so excited to be here today. So I guess I know some of you are probably thinking, like many people have asked me in the past, is girl, you gonna leave your good job to be an entrepreneur? Yeah. I don't know why people get so caught up in, I guess, the good job paradigm because I guess I think sometimes it's probably because of the way we were raised because I'm sure many of you like me were raised that you go to school you get your degree you work for xyz company for 30 plus years and then you get your gold watch but the thing (laughs) the realization I guess a hello self moment for me first time was when I was working with another engineer and he was about to retire 
And he was telling me about his retirement package. Now, I didn't know about the retirement package. And you would think that I would have some clue about it, but I really did because wow. I followed this path as I just, the path I just described to you guys. Right. So when he was telling me about this, he was saying that he was only going to have 30% of his current pay. And I was just like, so <laughs> wait a minute here. I have followed this plan that I have been told. I went to school. I got my degree. I'm working for this company. <laughs> and I see this go watch at the end, right? But no one ever told me at the end of this path that I was going to be broke. <laughs> What am I working for? <laughs> what, what is the yes. point of all of this? And then, and I said it just like that. And he goes, oh, Inga, it's not like that. Okay, so how is it? Tell me how it is. Because right. what you just told me, I hear broke. Yes, so right. <laughs> he goes in and tells me, you know, I won't be driving to work. So I won't have the gas expenses and oh, the car yeah. will need repairs. <laughs> And I've already paid off my house, so I don't really have that as an expense. And I'm really not going to be going and about all the little things that I do normally when I go to work. So it's going to be my expenses are going to be reduced. I said 70 percent reduced because what you just told me is it's going to be a 70. All that you just said, I don't hear 70 percent out of that. OK, but it just was just like, wow. So nobody told me that part. Nobody told me that at the end of this plan that I've been given, that it seems like all the people around me are told to do, that I'm going to be broke. So I started thinking about one of my mentors that's in my direct sales business, and she ain't broke. She's walking around, got money in her pocket, and I'm just like, which one of these do I want? Do I want this side where I'm done, <laughs> this side where he's told me I'm only going to make 30%? Or am I going to do this over here, plan B, that my mentor is doing? And she's just loving life. You know, <laughs> she works when she wants to. She's able to choose who she's working with. She has complete control over her schedule. She's able to take time for herself as well as her family. And if something she wants to do, she makes it work. She schedules, she makes her schedule so she can do whatever she wants Amen. to do. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And I'm not getting that in my current nine to five. So at that particular moment, that was a God moment, a God wink, I would call it, yeah. that I'm going to have to do something different because this little plan that I was given, they didn't tell me the end result of this plan. And as a result of me knowing what it is, I'm not doing that. You <laughs> know, that Inga, no you're, you're bringing out a real important point that I think a lot of people get caught in that trap. And what is there beyond this job or this position or this right. place? They have no except it's always tied up about the money and not right. about dreams. Right. And this man was all he had positioned everything, but he had not. I wonder if he had dreams. And that was something I wrote down. Is there a dream beyond retirement? Yeah. And I think this is something listeners think about. If you're in a retirement position or you're entering midlife, um, it's not over. It may just right. be beginning. Yes. Exactly. Okay. I'm sorry, but I, I had to bring that. I love that. Oh, no, that was an excellent point yeah, to bring I, out because I, I think that. people. Yeah, because I don't think people dream. I think people are just working to pay bills at right. the end of the day. Yeah. And when they, at the dream factor, when you start talking to them about it, because I see this in my clients as well, they, they haven't even thought that far. No. They're just thinking about today. Yeah. This is what I'm doing today. And it's just a grind. And then all of a sudden they wake up and they look at themselves and you're just like, where did the time go? That is it. That's it. Life passes by passes while we're right working by. on this job that we really don't like because it's going to give me the gold watch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Great point. Yes. So at that particular time, I did not, I didn't step out on faith at then, but oh. it definitely fe festered into me at that particular point. So I started taking courses. And at that point, I was really focused on efficiency, productivity. Yeah. Because at that point, I didn't, I couldn't see myself quitting, I was used to this lifestyle that I had created. You know, I was making six figures 
have a house, you know, all of that. So it's just, how can I walk my dream out and have all of this too? I don't see how I'm going to put the two together. And I know probably many people are th- were thinking yes. the same thing as I was thinking at that time. So at that point, my goal was, okay, I'm just going to be as efficient as I can. I'm going to maximize my time as much as I can. So when I'm off this job, I can really focus on growing my business and figuring out a way that I can get out of here. That's basically what I was thinking. Yes. So several years come by, go by and my company gets bought out by another company And for those of you that have been in that type of experience, you know, they give you all the song and dance, how it's going to be so much better because they bought you. And yeah. And I remember people asking me, Mingo, what do you think? I think that this song and dance that they're giving me is a bunch of, I'm just going to say it nicely, BS. And we'll just wait and see what happens because I don't believe it. Where lo and behold, about 18 months after they bought us, you know what happened. A downsizing. Oh, yeah. The big L word. A layoff. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they have figured out what they needed to figure out about the company. They have decided that they're going to do it a different way. And in order for them to do it that different way, we got to let some folks go. We don't need all of you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So at that particular point, This is the first time in my career that they were actually going to lay off an engineer, okay? Yes. But the thing about it at this particular time, I'm a black female. I am the most senior. I'm the most senior out of all the people on the site as a mechanical engineer. So I knew that they weren't going to choose me, okay? So what did I do? I chose myself. I told them, hey- you know, this has been great. I really feel like this is my land line in the sand that you guys need to let go of a mechanical engineer. And I have talked to my, um, the Holy, Holy Spirit is telling me that I need to step out on faith. And this is my moment right here. Oh my God. And you brought up something that I think is very important that probably really helped you. You're a woman and you're a black female and they're having a layoff and they're probably going to give you everything you want because they don't want to get in any. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hey, yes, this is good. Yeah. So I at that particular point, I stepped out and said, OK, choose me because they were trying to trying to downsize. And because I was the most senior, they were going to have they were going to have to pay me a year salary. So yeah. I felt like this is like a, this is just if I was ever going to walk away from this job, this would be the perfect time. Perfect. For me to do it. So that's exactly what I did. So at that particular time, because they had already, I had already signed my paperwork and all of that, they weren't expecting other people to leave. So what happened was I just, I put my hand out and said, okay, I'm going to do it. Nobody else in my, in my group decided they were going to go before I signed the paper. That's the key. Before I signed the paper. Okay. So the paper is signed. It is, it's official. I got my paperwork so they can't renege on it now. Then people start dropping like flies. <laughs> they said, if she can do it, I can do it. They're just, no, I don't even think it was that. I don't think they left to, to do their own thing. They left to get another job because they felt like the ship was sinking. Oh, that's and then was left. a good time because they would probably give them some severance too. No, uh, uh-uh, because oh, at didn't? that particular, no, they didn't. They had a certain number of people that they were going to let go. And after that number of people were fulfilled, oh. that was it. So these people were jumping ship after that. And oh. then because I was the most senior, the other people that were around me wouldn't have gotten as much severance as I did because I had been there over 20 you, years. You're right. So there, it it wouldn't have been an icing on the cake for them like it was for me because they had less time. So that was the difference. And I think in that, in them seeing that they felt like the ship was sinking, they were like, I'm not going down with this, find something else and go. So then what ended up happening is. Oh my God. They needed to hire people. Yes. I was going to say they were short engineers. They were (laughs) short engineers. Exactly. (laughs) So what happened was. They told me I had to stay six months after I signed the As a sultan or how? Just to cover them. Just to kind of cover them. Okay. So I was like, okay, I can do that. 
they yeah. paid you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I still got paid, but yeah, it was just, uh, you know, covering them as people were jumping ship. And I was, I had a big project that I was working on that I was running the whole time. So they were like, okay, Inga, we are want you to wait until you finish this out so we can make sure everything's up and going because you've been running the whole thing the whole time. You know what? That after was, that's gone and then we'll go. That was a perfect time. I had a client one time that the company, it was a healthcare company. They had a downsizing and her husband was an entrepreneur. So they didn't have insurance or anything okay. outside of this corporation she worked for. And I think it was interesting, Inga, they let her go and she came to me for coaching. And what I recommended was let's try something. Just what happened with you. Let's go back. She was working on a project. And I think this is good for people to know because the company companies need us as, much, as much as, as we, we need, need them. Yes. That's right. That's and right. so I said to her, Do, is anybody else working on that project? And she said, I've been leading it for the last two years and we're just going into a new phase that I've been part of. And I said, "Is it? are they going to continue it? And she said, yes. And I said, who's taking over? She said, I don't know yet. I said, I got an idea. Let's go put together, we put together a proposal for her to be the consultant on that project. Okay. Ah, oh, okay. and her husband was scared to death. He said, she won't get insurance as a consultant. I said, who are you dealing with? You got to be kidding. That's going to be part of our proposal. So we put in... Uh, we didn't get the 100% of the insurance, but we got 90%. Oh, you can't beat that with a stick. Yes. And we got consulting fees. But guess what happened? She got 90 days. Then they wanted to up it again because they needed her. So still as a consultant, they upped it another 90 days. Okay. So she worked almost two years on that project. Wow. Yes. As a consultant. And do you know... At, at, I've been a consultant. You've been a consultant with companies. We make more as consultants. Oh, yeah, you do. That we... <laughs> and so her husband said, bless you, bless you. But you know what? We've got more power than we think in corporations. Oh, we do. Because not only, and it's not about just wheeling power. It's looking at how we can add value to exactly. their vision, their business, their approach. Yeah, very good point. You, It was, yeah, perfect time. See, it, but it's funny that you say that because that's what I use. I did exactly what you just said. As mm -hmm. my six months was coming up, I mm -hmm. saw that they didn't have somebody to replace me. So mm -hmm. they were going to scramble. So I went to them. I said, hey, you're about to give me this money. It's at the end of the year. So it's going to mm -hmm. be like I'm paid twice. So the taxes is going to just eat me alive. Why don't, let me help you. Mm. And we can work with a win-win. This was in December of 2019 when this happened. Yes. Why Why don't I work another two months? Yes. Just so I can get into 2020. Yes. And I can cover you another two months while we're still looking for another engineer. Once we get them, I can train them. Yes. And have them up to speed before I leave. That's how you add value. Yes. Everybody listening. You can add value, but don't just whine about being let go because a company's downsizing. Get out there and look at how you can continue to add value as you work your own goal for your next piece of the career, whether it be your business or whatever. Great right. point, Singa. Wow. Yeah. So that's what I end up doing. So Ooh. instead of leaving at the end of November of 2019, I left at the end of January of 2020. And we all know what happened after that. Yes, right? absolutely. Perfect <laughs> and I'm timing. Grateful, you know, and I'm so grateful for that because, you know, I know God has a divine plan for all of yes. us. And I often wonder if for whatever reason, the COVID thing came earlier, would I have stayed or if I would have still left? Okay. If I would have been like, oh my gosh, maybe I shouldn't go. Maybe I need to stay. I don't oh. know. I don't know what my frame of mind would have been, but I'm grateful that it happened the way it did. So I never had to figure that part out. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes those things are just too difficult to deal with. I've already right. moved on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. Oh my So that's gosh. pretty much how I have been an entrepreneur on a part-time basis 
while I was still working. Yes. But my, my full-time entrepreneurship didn't come until February 1st of 2020. And here everybody else was complaining about, oh my gosh, you can't. And you started a business then? Yeah, but it was, but you have to think about it. It was right before all of the shutdown and all of that yeah. stuff. We're probably talking like six weeks out before, I think, because we really shut down like March 15th, I think it was. But you found clients at that point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because at that particular time, we were still kind of doing our thing and everybody thought it was just something that was going to blow over, you know? Yeah, like a snotty nose or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Now tell me more about your confidence coaching. Exactly. What do you work with? Mostly women or all yeah, women? So I primarily work with, I would say, professionals, corporate professionals and entrepreneurs. I enhance their confidence through a three-tiered approach, through their appearance, their mindset, and their consistency. I have, I guess I have two aspects of my business. I have a beauty aspect of my business where I sell skincare and color cosmetics. Oh, that to just fits help right people. perfect with your image for yeah. yeah. Exactly. So it just helps people feel good in their skin. Yeah. So they can really own their true authentic form. And because I'm a firm believer, nobody can do you better than you. So oh, Christ, yes, absolutely. So really just helping people just enhance their God-given attributes. I'm all about that. My my slogan is do you boo. <laughs> do sure. you what? Do you boo. Oh my gosh. Fantastic. So it's image. And then what else did you say? And then the other aspect of it is the coaching aspect. And this is really primarily for female coaches. I actually call it female cash. Cash stands for coaches, authors, speakers, and home-based business owners, helping them build their business by building relationships, as well as master their mindset and their consistency, because that's what's going to take them to the top. Yeah, very. You know what? I didn't know this before we met, but I think it's very interesting because it your approach is a lot like Hello Self's approach. Very, oh, okay. Yeah, because one of the things, I mean, that that's exactly what Hello Self is about. Are you projecting the image of who you want the world to see you as? Yeah. So that can be, I don't call it beauty, but I do talk about the image because I think clothing, attitude, yes, all of that comes in with our image and it makes, it causes the world to see us different. You know, sometimes I get so frustrated when I'm working in corporations and I see, it doesn't have to be corporations, just how people go out in public and present themselves. The clothing, right. it looks like they just got out of bed. Rolled out of bed, yeah. <laughs> and I am so much about, I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm a fashion fashionista, but I like to present myself. I'm proud of who I am, celebrate. Right, so right. that's what your confidence coaching oh, is Oh yeah, about. for sure, for sure. Because I think that's where it starts. When you look good, you feel good. Yes. And then you feel like you can do more. Yes. I mean, I'm a firm believer in that. That's and where it starts. Yeah. And not only do you feel like it, people will look at you like. Exactly. They, they can the, feel your, they can feel that you feel like it. I say it like they feel you. They can feel and, that energy. And they that believe you it because your message is about it. That's not only your verbal message, but your presence. And I yes, think that. Yes, exactly. I think That's sometimes exactly. we don't think about that. Yeah. yeah. Is to step up and be who you want to be seen as. Exactly. That, uh, that's. How did your mechanical engineering? <laughs> I know it's um, a switch, right? How, yeah. How did you go from that? I know you said you were in sales in the beauty industry while mm -hmm. you were still, but what were the things that you saw in yourself that caused you to move from engineering? Because I know that's really different. I hired engineers and I know how they think. It's, right. yeah. It's not always, now I'm not saying they don't think conceptually, but, or creatively, because they do, but they also get down to the nuts and bolts. And yeah, and I think that's good in the coaching piece too. But how did, what, what were some of the things that you took from being an engineer that helped you transition into this coaching, confidence well, I, coaching? I see an engineer as a trained problem solver. Wow. That's what we do. We 
prop we solve problems. So in essence, when I be when I made the transition from being an engineer to an entrepreneur, I was using my same skill set, but instead of doing it for somebody else, I was doing it for myself. I was try I was working through figuring out how am I going to scale this business? How can I further expand and by, provide more value to the people that I serve? How can I really resonate with people so they can really feel that when I talk to them, they feel like I'm talking to a person and that not they're not just a number that I'm trying to check off and say, oh, I talked to five or six people or whatever mm-hmm. my my goal or quota would be for the day. Mm-hmm. So that that was the part of it that I've been able to do. And I really feel like I've been trained to be an entrepreneur because that's what entrepreneurs do on a regular basis. Yes. We are on, we are continuously solving problems. And I just happen to have a degree in it. Yes. Yeah. No, that's right on. And then in your confidence building, it's part taking your skills as a engineer and teaching people how to problem solve, how to right. think. Yeah. How to think, exactly. How to yeah. be consistent, how to stand out, how to build a brand. Whatever you're wow. doing, just like you were talking about your Hello Self brand, you have a brand that represents you. So when people see Hello Self, they think of Patricia. Yeah. Just making sure people do that, even if they have, especially if, um, what they will do it if they have their own business, but even in the direct sales space, instead of rattling off and tell everybody you're an XYZ consultant, really at the end of the day, people buy people first. So if they don't resonate with you, they can go to somebody else and get whatever you sell. Yeah, so it's really right. important to make sure that you present yourself first who happens to be, oh, by the way, an XYZ consultant. Yes. Yeah, I think because people go, number one, like you said, to learn, they they attend things like this or they look for a coach, but somebody that can help them see beyond where they can see right now. Because it's just like you were saying, you're an engineer, so you think that way naturally. But not everybody thinks that way naturally. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I think a lot of times, but one thing that you brought up that I I think coaches and not that I'm putting coaches down, but I think sometimes we get too much in me, I'm a coach too, but I think we get too much in step one, step two, step three. And everybody is a human being, exactly. not a number. Yes. Yes. I'm, I so agree with you that. And that's one of the reasons why I created my coaching program called the Relationship Accelerator, just so really to help people resonate with other people, to truly connect, to build those authentic connections. Because even like when we met, it was great how we just resonated with each other. I know. It wasn't a sales call. And I know there's a lot of people sending out DMs for sales. And I totally yes. get that. But at the end of the day, you really want to connect with the person first because you are not just talking to them, but it's very similar to that Verizon network commercial we used yes. to see where they talk about everybody has their their group of people. So we have, everybody has their group of people. So when you connect with someone and they may not necessarily want what you sell and you just discard them, you're missing out on all the other people that they know, their inner circle. So it's so important for you to build those relationships and not just think about the person that's in front of you because they may not want what you have, but they may know a ton of people that need what you have that's in their inner circle. Yes, And that's one of the things that I really share and help, you know, make sure people understand the power of relationships and how they can truly grow your business because entrepreneurship is a team sport. Ah, very interesting. Key point, listeners, entrepreneurship is a team sport. So building relationships is number one. So much, but... I want to ask something, and I want to stay aware of your time, but I want to ask something about the impact of social media on coaches, because you had said there's always these things coming out. And right. then the fact that do you focus on dollars first? Here's how you can make a million dollars. I did this in two months. Do you, yeah. see, those, do you see those no. things? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It seems like everybody wants to talk about how much money you can make. Yeah. But it's not about the money at the end of the day. It's, it's about, about the people. It's about the people. It's about the people that you serve, the 
value that you provide, because I can promise you, if you're providing value, that the money is going to come for yes. sure. It's just making sure that you're providing that value. You really want to, you come with a servant heart, not with the, you know, the dollar signs in your eyes hard. Yeah. And that's another reason why I really promote using surveys. I have a program called the Savvy Survey System that allows people to send surveys out to find out if the people that they are talking to are their person and then be able to find out, you know, maneuver from that point on to take them along their value, their value ladder so they could serve them better that yeah, way. Yeah, very interesting. So is that Savvy Survey available to everybody or is it just? Yeah, it is. That is. I'll make sure that I give you the link so you can. Yeah, put it in cool. The, and audience, we'll, in the put show that notes. Out, we'll put that out there so that if you want to do some of the things that Inga has said work for her business, you will have access to this Savvy Survey system. And I want to learn it too. (laughs) Yeah. But anyway, I think I really, what impact, and then I'll make sure that we move forward. But what impact do you see that social media has put on, has how no let me say it this way how has social media impact coaching and building these relationships of human first how do you see that social media positive or negative i don't care but well how- i see it i see it as a positive because i can think pre covid i primarily worked my business locally okay the, uh, what social media has allowed me to do is to talk to people that I probably would have never crossed paths with otherwise. So now I have some UK girlfriends. Now I have girlfriends in Australia. Now I have girlfriends in Africa. These people I would have never come across if I didn't interact or connect with them via a networking event or some kind of just meeting them on LinkedIn. So I really think that's, I see it as a positive more so mm-hmm. than a negative because mm-hmm. it's a really allowed me to truly expand my territory, similar to the prayer of Jabaz, you know, that talks about all about oh, expanding yes. territory. As a result of that, I don't just talk to people where I live. I can talk to people everywhere. Yes. So you see, because uh, sometimes I'll have people talk about the impact of social media has destroyed relationships. But, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because- well, I guess- Yeah, go ahead. Because there's not that interaction so much. It's just a text message. So I was anxious to hear your perception of that too. See, and okay, so I'm glad you brought that up. So I'm going to take it from two standpoints. Okay, Okay. First and foremost, I totally get the text message thing, okay? Because I remember when we were shut down and I was trying to figure out how I was going to transition my business that was local to basically online. Yeah. So I had taken tons of courses and they're telling you about sending these DMs and interacting with people that way. And to me, it's felt so slow because if I met somebody today in and person, impersonal. And, 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 yeah, I could talk to them. We yes. could interact. It would be a conversation. And when I left them, I would know where I stood. For the most yes. part, I'll say it that way. Yes. But if you're sending these DMs, you got to wait for Susie Q to see it. Okay. Yes. Susie Q sees it. She answers. Oh, and sorry. Now, I didn't get back right away. I Exactly. Been- whatever that, however that goes. <laughs> and then you got to send her another message. Yes. And something that would probably take probably 10 minutes in person now becomes a two week conversation yes, because yes. of the back and forth. Okay. And I can tell you from that frustration is why I created the savvy survey system, Ah, because I felt like that long going back and forth and waiting. Why can't I just answer, ask you the questions that I'm interested in finding out about you to find out if you are truly my person. And then based on your answers, decide for myself, if I'm going to continue con- to connect with you or if I'm going to just say, okay, I'm just going to let this person go. And it helps them decide if they want to. Exactly. Because you know where you stand. And that's the part I'm telling you. That is why I created it. Because I used to, 
It used to just take so much time. And I remember talking to a mentor and she was like, oh, Inga, you leave a voice message, but you still got to wait. Okay, yes, whether yes. I write it, if I type it in or if I say a voice message, I still have to wait for them to respond. I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> and okay, I, I still have to wait. Because when I want to do something, I want to do it. <laughs> Let's get it done. Yes. Well, what did they say? I'm a part of the Denden Club. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Okay. Yes. Yeah, me too. And that that's what bugged me so much about it. Because it was just like, man, this social media thing is great. I have access to all of these people. That's absolutely wonderful. But I have to wait for the person yes. to see it. So since you're all about relationships, it helped you expand the survey and you're going in this direction, expand your audience and build relationships. And Social build relationships. Yes. Because then I could, I'm an introvert. I have, I'm an introvert by nature. Yeah. I'm an engineer too. You probably yeah, think yeah. I'm an introvert. Yeah. Not an extrovert at all. Yeah. So I like to talk to people that I know. Yes. Okay. Oh, and yes. That, so what I figured out was when I'm doing these cold DMs, because that's what they are. Yeah. I don't know if that person on the other side is really even interested in connecting with me or talking to me at all. But when I send them that survey and they answer the questions back, I can then find out what their need is and possibly fill it with some of the things that I already have to offer my product yes. or my service. Yes. So now it's a better connection because I can talk about the things that are, that concern them because they told me that on the survey, they told me that up front. Yes. And then I can have more of a really connection with them because I'm really finding out exactly what they need. Yes. So I'm not thinking dollars here. Because I know that there are going to be times when somebody is going to tell me that they need something and I'm not going to be able to help them. Yes. Oh. I may be able to refer them to the folks yes. in my network. See, this is where the relationships come in. Yes. That Susie Q needs some help with some hair care products. That is out of my scope. All right. But I know Becky Sue over here, she has some excellent hair products. So I'm going to connect yes. Susie Q to Becky Sue. All right. Oh my gosh. So they can get together. But that's how it works. And that's why surveys are so powerful because you're not just finding out the stuff for you. You could potentially be finding out for the people that you know that you collaborate with. So and you that, can be that resource. Oh my gosh. Resource that is source. another that's another key thing that you're talking about. Women can in expand their power of influence in the world just by that way, because if you help somebody else and somebody helps somebody else, exactly. what we're doing is just that Stephen Covey circle that said it all begins with you. Right. And then once you understand who you are and what you've got to offer, then you can influence the circle bigger and influence. So exactly. that's how women are really showing their value now, too. And you have done a great job of really putting that circle of power together by starting with you and your situation and then looking beyond that and now experience and helping others. If you were to, uh, so I want to start uh, taking us down now. What are one or two or three things that you would say to somebody that's standing on that corner of, I don't know what to do, which way do I go from here at that signpost? What would you tell them just in general, I know you don't know who they are right now, but if they're standing there trying to figure the next level out for themselves or the next step, what is something you would say to them? Maybe three okay. ideas. I'm going to give you three ideas, but quickly, I, there's one one key point that I also Oh, oh okay. That's it. Okay. So we talked about the DMs for social media. Yeah. That was one aspect of social media. Another aspect of social media, I feel, are Zoom meetings. Uh -huh. If you're in a particular situation where you can't meet somebody locally, yes. the best way that the best connection you can make is via, of course, the best connection would be in person. But the next best connection is definitely a virtual meeting yes. where you can see their mannerisms. You can see, you can build intent. I'm sure you guys have probably wanted some help 
from whatever program or software that you were using and you type in, you know, everybody has those little chat boxes now where yeah. you type in what you need help on. And this person has, what you're asking is nowhere near what this person, they're thinking that you're asking something altogether different. You're just like, yes. dude, really? No, that's not what I mean. You put a video in there and you can show them this is what I mean. It just makes the intent. Yes. So much easier when you do it that way. So you're really able to build connection. Granted, it wouldn't be as high as it would be if you were in person, but it's the next best thing oh, wow. with people that are not local to you. So that yes. I, I did want to share that. With oh, you. fabulous. That's a fabulous idea. Yes. Okay. So the three key things that I wanted to share is first and foremost is I want you to be authentically you. I think oftentimes we get so caught up on trying to copy somebody, to be a copycat. And I am a firm believer that when you do things that resonate with you, the people that resonate with you are going to really connect with you because you're being you more so yes, than somebody else. Yes, yes. So it's very important that you're true to yourself because like I said earlier, nobody can do you better than you. And you really want to show the true, your true authentic self, whatever you decide to do, whether yes. you're working for somebody or building your own business, but especially if you're building your own business, because that's really going to help you find your people. So yes. that's first and foremost. The second thing I wanted to say is, and I touched on this a little bit already, is about the power of video. Mm. I know many of you are probably mm. saying, girl, I don't want to be on camera because my hair is not white. Mm. Or I've gained weight mm. or, you know, my makeup is not what it needs to be. Girl, I can just tell you, ain't nobody thinking about all that. Because if, <laughs> if, if you have a message that people really value, they don't care about that. No. And I don't want you, I don't want you to block your blessing because you're concerned about all that superficial stuff. Bravo. I can remember when I first did my first video and I was nervous as I don't know what. I had to do it in my car because at the time I didn't have this my setup where I had a, a mic and all that kind of thing. So I had to do it in my car and I had to do it in the car because I was trying to make sure I could use the natural light for the video. Yes. So I'm in there doing this video. This woman comes up and she's closing the door and I'm thinking, oh, I got to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know how to, because at that point I didn't know how to edit either. It was just, I was just going full fledged on my phone and doing it. Yes. You don't need special equipment. You don't need a mic. You can Hallelujah. use the natural light. Don't come up with all those excuses on why you can't do it. Just do it. Yeah. And just know that you're going to evolve over time. Bravo. Um, <laughs> and you don't have to wait to be perfect. Cause I think as women, we get caught up in that, yes. that role too. And then last, but definitely not least, I wanted to sell, tell you that failure is feedback and it's great to fail. And the reason why it's so great, because when you're successful, you don't learn nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. Oh, very good point. Yes. All of the things that just you needed to learn. Just another celebration, just another yes. celebration. <laughs> I think, and I really truly believe that the success that you have is for our ego, okay? It's for <laughs> us to say, okay, I learned so much. You yeah, can look back and say, oh, I've accomplished all of this because all of the failures that I had along the way, and I finally figured this thing out. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to find something else I need to figure out. That's what we do. It's an, un <laughs> it's an endless staircase of possibilities for how successful we can be. Oh my so God. So just really just embrace the failure. It's feedback. You're going to learn tons from it and it's to totally okay. And I think that was the biggest thing that just released me because I was so caught up in failing and how failing was so bad, but failing helps us learn. That's how we yes. learn is very to tweak good. and repeat. So it's very important that you do that and it's okay to do that. And the faster you fail, the quicker you'll get your success. So just remember <laughs> that. You know what? And I think everything's a perception. It's yeah, a, it is. It's our own perception. Somebody else might say, I thought that was a very good meeting. I really got a lot out of that. And you think, 
Oh my gosh, I wish I would have said worst. this. I wish I would have said yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but you, yeah. So it's only in our own perception of ourselves trying to be perfect. It's back to yeah. that ego thing that Inga talked about. Inga, you have given so many great points to, and we built a relationship simply by Zoom. By talking, exactly. <laughs> to perfect your example. We are I, leading by example. Exactly. So I'm a firm believer in that. But I want to say... Thank you so much. And I'm sure the listeners have gotten a lot of strategies and tips. I know I have, and I've tried to highlight some of those as you go through them, because those are the things that everybody faces when we think we failed, when we don't know how to build relationships, when we yep. say, oh, I don't know how to do that social media it's all the same things that everybody's going through. So just get out there and jump in, said, jump in and call it a failure or whatever you want. But anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for everything thank you've offered today. Thank I you. Am, and thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. This has been a delight. I've loved it. So before we go, I just like to say to my audience, thank you for being here today. And my hope is, and Inga's hope, is that you got one or two or three things that help you step away from that post, that signpost that you were standing on and say, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I don't exactly. care. <laughs> you know, I don't care if there's a perfect way. I'm just going to step in and do it. So just remember, if you've got dreams that you're wanting to implement or start on, just go do it. Find somebody that could help you listen to our podcast on Hello Self. But just remember, you have everything you need. And the first step is to believe exactly. that you can and bring your authenticity to the table. So thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Hello, self, specifically Inga today in her brilliant sharing of so many strategies, but specifically her life story. So this is Patricia Leonard, your host of Hello Self saying thank you for tuning in today. And remember, I always say, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.